What is the impact of Anthony's specific word choice on the meaning and tone of her speech after being convicted of voting? In this lesson, you will learn how an author's word choice impacts tone by analyzing how specific words create emotional responses and patterns. Let's review. We've been reading and rereading the speech after being convicted of voting. Remember, this speech was written and given in 1872 by Susan B. Anthony, a pioneer for women's rights and suffragist. She gave this stump speech in all 29 postal districts of Monroe County, New York during the 1872 presidential election. Let's also review what we know about good readers. Good readers think about the meanings of words and phrases as they are used in text, including figurative, connotative, and technical meanings. Remember, the dictionary meaning is not often the intended meaning of the author. Authors are very purposeful in their word choice, choosing words for their connotations, the feelings they elicit in the reader. The connotation is what makes language loaded, giving words meaning beyond their denotative or dictionary definition. So what is the impact of Anthony's specific word choice on the meaning or tone of her speech? Since the question is asking about the tone of the speech, I'm going to have to take a look at the whole text to answer this question. Today, we are going to be exploring our question about the tone of Anthony's speech using these three steps. One, reread text, highlighting loaded language. Two, considering each highlighted word, ask, what is its connotative meaning? And three, ask, what connotative patterns do I see in the author's word choice? Jot down a few notes about your thinking. So first, I'm just going to reread the text, highlighting any language that feels loaded. This means any words that make me feel something, whether it be anger, happiness, etc. As I am reading, I think to myself, hmm, loaded language. Right away in the first paragraph, in the first sentence, I have found one of these words that creates a feeling in me. It is the word alleged. I'm going to highlight the word and come back to it later in step two. For now, I will continue reading. The next word I come across that creates a feeling in me is in the fourth paragraph. I'm going to read the whole sentence aloud. And it is a downright mockery to talk to women of their enjoyment of the blessings of liberty while they are denied the use of the only means of securing them. Wow, the word mockery certainly elicits a feeling in me as I read. I'm going to highlight this word as well. As I continue reading, I find another word that really elicits a response. It is in the last paragraph on this page. Let me read the sentence. It is an odious aristocracy, a hateful oligarchy of sex, the most hateful aristocracy ever established on the face of the globe. The word odious certainly elicits a response, so I will highlight it as well. I am certainly getting a sense of the tone Anthony is creating with her word choice. I'm going to finish reading the second page of the text to see if I can find some more examples of words that elicit an emotional response, that loaded language. Here in the last paragraph, I found two examples in the same sentence, and I hardly believe any of our opponents will have the hardihood to say they are not. Both the word hardly and hardihood elicit that emotional response from me. I will highlight these two words and move on to the next step. So now we have to think about these words as the second step is to consider each highlighted word and ask, what is its connotative meaning? An easy way for me to organize my thinking about this is to create a simple t-chart. I want to write word on the first column and then connotative meaning on the other. The first part is done for me. I have already identified words that created or elicited a response when I was reading. I am going to quickly jot these words down under the heading word. Now comes the tricky part, the thinking and reflecting part. I have to think about the connotative meaning of each word. What did this word make me feel as I was reading? Hmm, alleged. Alleged implies something was supposed or unproven. I feel as if Anthony was mocking her indictment, believing it was unproven. I'm going to jot that down in the second column. Now mockery. Mockery in this speech seemed condemning like it was ridiculous or absurd to talk to women about their blessings. It also conveyed anger. I'll jot that down as well. Moving on to odious. Odious is harsh, conveying anger and disgust. Almost finished. My next word is hardly. As I read this word, I really feel a sense of sarcasm. Anthony is challenging or daring anyone to disagree with her. 
In addition, it would be ridiculous to do so. And finally, hardihood. Like hardly, hardihood connotes a challenge. As when she used the word hardly, Anthony continues to challenge her audience with this word, daring them to disagree with her. Finally, the last step. Ask, what connotative patterns do I see in the author's word choice? Jot down a few notes about your thinking. I'm going to start by reviewing my chart, thinking about what tone Anthony established with her word choice. One feeling I get when I read over the list is that Anthony is mocking those that disagree with her. First, she uses the word alleged, indicating the crime did not happen. In addition, she indicates these laws are absurd and ridiculous, almost mocking those who support them. I'm going to jot these ideas down. Another feeling I get when I read over my list is that Anthony is angry. She uses words like mockery and odious to convey and stir these emotions. I will jot this down as well. A third feeling conveyed is sarcasm. Anthony states that those in opposition will hardly be able to disagree. She posed a question that was so ridiculous. Are women persons? She could not expect anyone to disagree, yet asks it anyway. I will make a quick note. Finally, Anthony is challenging her opponents. Words like hardly and hardihood convey this challenge. She is daring her opponents to continue to disagree with her. Overall, Anthony's speech has a biting tone, challenging her audience to think and support women's rights. At last, I have completed the three steps and I'm going to go back to our focus question. What is the impact of Anthony's specific word choice on the meaning or tone of her speech after being convicted of voting? I have done a lot of thinking and luckily annotated the text and wrote down some notes. I will use both to help me answer this question. The specific words Anthony chooses impact the meaning and tone of her speech. Many words, such as mockery and odious, convey anger. She uses other words, such as hardihood, to challenge her audience. When she uses the word hardly in the final paragraph, Anthony comes across as sarcastic, daring anyone to disagree with her. These words together, in addition to her reasoning, create an overall tone of challenge and aggression. Anthony is trying to persuade people to agree with her. She is playing to people's emotions, fighting for women's right to vote. Let's review our steps. 1. Reread text, highlighting loaded language. 2. Considering each highlighted word, ask, what is its connotative meaning? And 3. Ask, what connotative patterns do I see in the author's word choice? Jot down a few notes about your thinking. In this lesson, you have learned how an author's word choice impacts tone by analyzing how specific words create emotional responses and patterns.